Hello and welcome back to week two of Creative Change Workshops. My name is Hannah Aria and I hope you enjoyed last week's collage activity, The Wig of Wisdom. You may notice that my hair will change week upon week, but I just like to keep you entertained really and keep you guessing. So today I've got some gorgeous blonde pigtails. I hope you enjoy that. Anyway, moving on today, we're going to be doing some fabulous mixed media collage. So let's go. As you can see, I have a proper canvas this week. You do not need one. I just thought it would be good to do a demo on this one. You can use anything that you've got around the house, like a cardboard box that you just paint white or a cereal box that you just paint white, or you might even have one of these kind of craft journals and this would also be perfect. So use what you've got and don't worry about buying expensive materials. Sometimes it's really fun having a rummage around the shed and finding like old paint pots that haven't been used. Just things that you've sort of forgotten about really. And you can then bring them together and we can play and repurpose. So the theme of today is mixed media. And this was especially requested by one of our loyal followers, Sally. So hello Sally and thank you for this suggestion. I've got a real mishmash of stuff. So you don't have to have these, but I'm just gonna explain the things that are in my pile. So I've got various paints. Um, I wouldn't recommend using oils for mixed media just because they tend to take a long time to dry. So what I have got are acrylic paints and some water paints here if you've got them. Um, I've got some little cut up bits of tissue paper that we can add in later, some glue. Now these are quite specialised um, mediums for adding texture, but you don't need to have the actual official ones. If you've got things like polyfiller, that can actually be added to paint to create texture and make things a bit interesting. So there's a whole load of stuff that you might just have hanging around that you can experiment with. Um, I've also got some iridescent medium here. But we're going to start with the basics. I'm going to teach you some very simple techniques and we're going to create something quite abstract. So we're not doing a specific picture of a specific thing. We're going to experiment and play and see what evolves. So our first task really is to just create some sort of colour on the backdrop. So I've got some little blocks here of watercolours and I thought it would be quite good just to do like a rainbow wash across it just to create a nice little base. Now this is still wet but whilst it's still wet I want to start using these little bits of cut up um, tissue paper. Now hopefully you've got some of this around your house. If you haven't then the chances are you might have some sort of wrapping a little bit like this. It really doesn't matter what the colour is, it's about creating texture. So we're going to lay them down whilst it's wet and then once it's dry we're going to coat it in PVA glue. This is very freestyle so what I create today will probably look nothing like what you come up with and that's really good because we want to see the variety. This is not about getting a perfect piece of art, this is about rediscovering play, experimenting and just enjoying the process. Someone once said to me, oh but I'm no good at art and then I heard someone else say, but is art good for you? And that is what this whole series is about. It's not about the end product, it's about doing something that you enjoy that is good for you. So as you can see, I've now finished doing the watercolour wash and adding on the little bits of tissue paper. Again, you don't have to use squares, you can use any shape you want, you can scrunch them up, you can, you know, almost build these kind of little mountainous layers as well. But once you get to that initial point where you've got your first layer done, it's still going to be quite wet, so we need to give it time to dry out before we continue. Always start with thin layers and then build up the texture gradually. That way you know that it's all drying properly. While we are waiting for that to dry, we're going to begin on our next step. 
hopefully you all have these lying around either face wipes these are biodegradable cleansing wipes and what we're going to do is I've got some food colouring here if you have inks you can use inks as well and we're going to place it in the middle these are damp so they haven't dried out yet and we're just going to do some little splodges a little bit like tie-dye Now these are quite intense colours, so if you add in some water droplets that often just helps spread the intensity of the colour out a little bit. Now you can experiment with this, I mean obviously if you get a fresh one you can then actually do a, like an impression on top like that. So I'm folding out a brand new one pressing it down and allowing the ink to kind of soak in and these colours obviously won't be quite as vivid but you get different kind of effects so have a play around see how you get on and then if you leave these to dry overnight they'll be completely dry by tomorrow and we will find ways to add them in to our abstract mixed media design this is now dry to the touch. So I'm gonna begin by just putting over a layer of PVA glue. You can use varnish if you've got varnish. Once dried, again, that will just seal over as a transparent film to just make sure that our base is secured. Don't worry if it looks a little bit white to start with, that will change as it dries out. Now that it's been coated in the glue, it's actually quite a good time to add these little tie-dye pieces. Now you can either literally lay them out like that or you can start to sort of create wrinkles and spread it so that it's, you can really see it's almost like merging with the canvas. You want it to kind of become part of the background. You may need to add a little bit more glue over the top or varnish. I'm going to do this one in a slightly different fashion just to show you what I mean. So this one's a lot more crumpled. And I'm going to add a bit of glue over the top. There we go. To secure it. And we actually want these kind of wrinkles to stand out because they're making it interesting, creating new shapes texture and depth to our canvas or our journal or whatever you are working on. I also noticed that where I was drying um, the wet wipes, um, some of the patterns has actually come off on the newspaper and I'm a big fan of repurposing things that are accidental art and I consider this to be accidental art. So I'm going to rip round the main bits that I've got patterns on. you can see and again same sort of process I am going to just add that to our canvas if you've got anything else lying around like some extra tissue paper or just some interesting things that you think this would be a good point to add just go for it it's all about experimenting at this stage but we really want to make sure that those edges are nicely sealed and I think these little bits of text creeping through actually look quite interesting. So I'm going to let it dry and then we're going to add some new techniques. Okay next up I thought I would introduce you to using different mediums to mix with paint to create different textures and effects. Now here I've got some official ones, so I'll get some out for you. I'm going to show you in my little journal here. So this one is iridescent, so it's got this really lovely shiny kind of texture about it. Um, you can use any kind of acrylic paint to this, um, and it will just give it like a shimmery effect. So if 
I pop this here, I've got a nice bright pink. I'm just going to mix it with the iridescent medium. And you'll see it just gives it this lovely shimmer and sheen effect, which is fantastic if you're trying to create a sense of sort of movement and it will reflect the light really nicely. Okay, so that's the iridescent one. Another option is you can get these gel mediums. So they're quite thick. As you can see, it's quite a glossy texture to that already. And I'm now going to add a little bit of blue. Pop that there. Okay, so it sort of thickens the paint and, and just creates this really nice glossy texture. So when you're painting over things and you're trying to almost sculpt with the paint, this will give a very kind of vivid, glossy effect which is really good if you're painting water or anything that's quite extravagant. The last one is modeling paste. This is usually used to just thicken up the paint so you can almost build onto the canvas. There are various DIY substitutes that you can use as alternatives. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite colors now, which is Dyna teal colour and as we add it you can just see it becomes a lot more dense so if you're adding something this thick on top of layers of tissue paper and other mixed media it really stands out and, um, and it also makes your paint go a lot further as well and you can choose how much to add to create different depth of paint but I, I really enjoy using a combination of gloss, matte and iridescent all in one painting because it really highlights the contrast. But it's not everybody's taste. Um, it's quite good actually um, if you want to do a replica of a thick oil painting. So if we think back to like Van Gogh's paintings, he used a huge amount of texturised paint. Whereas if you used acrylic paint with a modelling um, medium that would have a very similar effect and be quite a lot cheaper actually. So today I'd just like you to experiment really. If you've got these then fantastic. If you haven't then maybe just try mixing it with PVA glue to get that kind of glossy effect. Maybe try out um, you know even things like polyfiller. It can be a bit of a hit and miss learning experience but it's just good fun and it's really sensory. So just get back to that element of play and enjoy it. Now another thing that I'm going to do is to add little bits of um, lemon wrapper, um, especially on these little golden bits here, just to create a little bit more texture. So you can just do a little layer of PVA glue or varnish. Great. Now you can paint over the netting in a totally different colour, but I quite like the vibrant yellow. So I'm going to just strategically place them where I want the brighter highlighted colours. And when I began this picture, I did not have any kind of idea of what it was going to end up looking like but it almost seems to me like it's naturally taken on the composition of like some rocks and the sea and crashing waves with a sunset background so once you sort of start to see something that you want to kind of build upon the ideas just emerge themselves so it's brilliant you don't need to plan ahead and these nets kind of go in with that whole nautical seascape type um, atmosphere which I really like. So I'll just seal those up and then we'll let it dry. Now hopefully you can see what I mean when I say that it looks a bit like a seascape with crashing waves. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a little bit of this um, brown wrapping paper and I'm going to create further rock like textures at the bottom literally just tearing up bits of paper and gluing them on. 
I also have some spare um, brown paint, so I might add that just to kind of emphasise the wrinkles on the rock type formations. So again, yours does not have to have any kind of seascape kind of format. Just see what you see in the picture and then work on it and let it evolve. So once it had dried, I decided it needed to be a bit more abstract. So I very much enjoyed peeling off some of the dried baby wipes. And you can see some brilliant textures left behind and you can see where the squares were originally. And I painted over a little bit just to create some really thick and dense contrasting paint. I also peeled back where the lemon netting had been, so we've got some really cool effects there. So I think this is probably the point of this exercise is to liberate yourself from everything you've ever been taught about art and just enjoy and play and experiment and see what happens. But I think this is just way better having ripped off half of the stuff that I'd layered up and I'm really pleased with it. I'd love to see your work. Please can you email in to info at hannaharia.com and we'll be able to show your work on our live streams next week. Enjoy creating.